story many across our region are talking about tonight after a week's long protest in Canada that caused a blockade in the country's capital. Truckers here at home in the U.S. are now fighting back. Fed up with current COVID restrictions, they're hoping their frustrations will be heard with a cross-country trucker convoy that will pass through Maryland on its way to the nation's capital. Give me a hell yeah! What? What? Hey, what's up, everybody? Jasper Gonzo here. Another episode of What's Next. Well, this is a story that we just can't get away from. And unfortunately, it continues to get worse. When you have the nonsense and the buffoonery and the idiocy that is the Dementia Administration, it's always been uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. And uh, borders, 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 but the hell with our borders. We go to Canada. And of course, we have Adolf Trudeau, uh, little Justin, as one Mark Levin, the great one, calls. Basically having autonomy over his country, using the police as stormtroopers, jackbooted thugs, to stomp on truck drivers. And again, I've said before in previous videos, mom and dads who are just basically making a statement. We have the right to choose. Remember, my body, my choice. But after several weeks of this, and you still have truckers in Canada standing up for their rights, staying strong, America has finally got in. There is a convoy coming. It kicks off today. It is, coming, is leaving California and is heading its way to Maryland, to D.C., to Dementia's doorstep. Oh, this should be fun. Let's take a look. This comes out of Breibart. Exclusive, USA. People's Convoy, set to roll Wednesday. Biden fears the American people. Well, those are facts. Let freedom roll is the slogan of the People's Convoy set to depart Wednesday morning from Adelanto, California, on its way to Washington, D.C., to protest federal coronavirus mandates and call for an end to President Dementia's emergency declaration. Convoy organizers Marcus Summers and Maureen Steele, and I'm sure they've already got eyeballs on them already, spoke to Breitbart News about their, quote, peaceful transcontinental movement to defend our freedom at a time when our freedom is on the line and tyranny is closing in. Quote, the freedom to choose is what our country is founded on, what our military has fought for and died for and bled for and sacrificed everything for. Summers, who has been a trucker for 34 years, told Breitbart News, we must stand up. This is our duty. I feel this is our way for myself personally, that I can fight for my country and its people. Quote, the blue collar boys, have historically always been the first to jump in and defend our freedom. Steele, who is a paralegal, mother and wife, has no previous experience with truckers, explained. Whatever war has been throughout history, it's always been blue-collar boys that are the first in, they sacrifice the most, they are the first to sign up, and they're doing it again. I mean, here we are again in 2022. With our freedoms on the line and tyranny closing in, and one more time, it's our blue-collar boys, so they are the tip of the spear, and we owe them a world of gratitude. Great statement. Great statement. Both Summers and Steele emphasize the importance of truckers to American society. Without trucks, we are the lifeblood of America. I mean, everyone, everybody dies. There would not be uh, doctors or nurses. There couldn't be. Uh, there couldn't even be continued. They couldn't even continue on without trucks. Summers said, explaining that the truckers are often unseen, unsung heroes of society, who are allow for success uh, to access. Excuse me, of all things, basic necessities like food, clothing and whatever someone ordered on Amazon. Quote, the last 23 months of COVID have been a rough road for all Americans to travel, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and not least, financially. A Saturday press release reads, with the advent of the vaccine and workable therapeutic agents, along with the hard work of so many sectors that contributed to declining COOF cases in so of severity of illnesses, it's now time to fully, and I will add that, reopen the country. Quote, it's not about... Uh, it's about bringing this country together and uniting right now, Summers continued. It's not so, not necessarily whether or not you've got, the, uh, you've got the shot. It's about the freedom to choose. 
and it's our freedom of choice. I mean, there's a lot of people that have gotten the vax that are on board with this as far as losing our freedom to choose whether we want to get the vax or not. Our freedoms are being stripped from us. True. Summers and Steele both felt that America's last chance to defend itself before the country descends into a quote-unquote tyranny, much like what's been going on in Canada and Australia. Yeah, it's, it's ugly in both countries. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we don't protest, we're going to lose our country forever, Steele said. For us to have allowed this to go on this long uh, is a shame on us. This is our time to take back our country and get things right and get things back to normal and send a very loud message and large message to the government. You work for us. They seem to have forgotten that. They seem to think that this is a dictatorship that they rule. Yeah, as the left-wing media. We don't know what we're talking about. Quote, the majority of people are aligned with us, she continued. The left seem to think that they are the majority. They don't. They've got the largest microphones. They've got Hollywood. They've got the mainstream media. They've got professors and teachers. About 80% of the country is in the middle of the road. 80% of the country is on board with getting back to normalcy and not having any of this nonsense continue. I'll add that, continue going on. To that end, the convoy's primary demand is a declaration of national emergency concerning that the coup pandemic is ended, rescinding all extra and supposed temporary emergency powers given to the executive branch. Along with that, they demand an end to the mask and vax mandates and a restoration of freedom to choose. But their demands go further, calling for accountability in the form of bipartisan congressional hearings. Yeah, we know how that ends. On the response of the COOF. We want local, state, and federal investigations on the COOF response, Steele told Breitbart. This is something that can never happen again. And if we don't unravel what went on and determine exactly what went wrong, yes, Chinese COOF, Lord Farquhar, and where things went wrong, we could repeat this again in the future, and it must not repeat. As Summers, who met with some other organizers and fighting over over regulation, excuse me, of the trucking industry in D.C., made it clear, this cannot be done without an outgrowth of support from the American people. We need the American people's help. We need everybody that enjoys the freedoms and understands what this is about. This is our last shot. This is really our last shot that we've got. You know, we have a thousand trucks. That's going to probably be about a tenth. A, I'm sorry, a ten-mile-long convoy. Speaking to those in power, Summers continue to say that they fear the American people. They fear numbers. If we, the Americans, unite, we have more power than they do. People oftentimes don't realize the power that we have within ourselves together as a nation, as a people. It sends a much powerful message when we unite. And they don't want that. It's a beautiful thing. This is America, Steele said, calling the convoy a true melting pot with persons from every walk of life, every nationality. We have moms coming with their kids, Subarus and the family dog, she continued. This is the People's Convoy, and they named it that for a reason. It's the people. It's we the people, and we the people are speaking up. Still told Breitbart News that their organization has put together a substantial infrastructure of logistics, maintaining peaceful uh, and peacefulness and safety, and ensuring that the sort of funding issues experienced by the Canadian counterpart does not affect them. Good for them. God bless them. Um... I know it's something that could not be put together at a drop of a hat. Um, so uh, for the People's Convoy to get this together, for uh, Summers and Steel to put this together uh, logistically is amazing. And um, I really hope that it goes off without a hitch. You're talking a thousand trucks, 10 mile convoy heading its way. And of course, there are going to be people who will join in along the route. Now, when it hits Washington, D.C., March 1, how is this going to come down? We all see, we all, sorry, we've all seen what's going on in Canada with Trudeau and how he's used, how he's abused his Canadian federal powers, his executive powers in going after innocent people, the civilians of Canada. I don't believe that will happen here in America. The only reason why I say that is because it's our constitution. Our constitution protects us. Yes, our constitution has been abused, has been even shredded at points. Obama, Biden, Clinton, George W. But with this, um, 
I pray that it goes off. Like I said, pray it goes off without a hitch. Um, God bless them. And um, it's going to be interesting as this thing kicks off today. And when it ends on March 1, and I'm sure Biden is going to be hiding underneath the desk or in the basement as Circleback Girl slams this protest, you know, because it's unconstitutional. It's un-American, you know, because they're racists and they're bigots, you know, as Americans, we know we've got your back. We've got your back. And, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch this unfold. And with that being said, I'm Jasper Gonzo. This is What's Next. If you want to see more just like this, please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.